In this video, I'm going to show you an example of applying the I can rule to understand DAX measures and filter context. It's called I can because if I can understand it, you can too. I've already covered the I can rule in a separate video. You can find the link in the details. Here, I will walk you through an example of applying the rule. Now, this question came from one of the students in my Learn Power BI class, Amir, and he asked, why do the year-to-date measures stop working when I clear the calendar filters? Let me demonstrate. So here we have our Power BI file, and as you can see, this is right now filtered to year 2016, and everything seems to be working. We have the sales and the sales year-to-date. But as soon as I clear this filter, notice that the year-to-date is gone. And that's what Tamir is asking about. So it, it, it shows like this in this scenario. And if you were showing it somewhat differently in a card, the same thing would happen. As soon as the year filter or calendar filters are gone, sales year to date shows a blank value. So that is the question. Uh, let's try to break it down using the I can rule. So, uh, let's start by first looking at the measures. So this is sales year to date, calculate sales, dates year to date, calendar date. Step, let's start with the step one in the I can rule, which is I for incoming filters. So on this cell, and remember every cell is an island, so whenever you're debugging your measures, think about it from a single cell perspective. So on this cell, what are the incoming filters? Well, there are no filters. So in this case, for the total row, there are no filters being applied. So that's easy. Let's move on to the second step, which is C. So I can C is calculate does its magic. And here, calculate is using the dates year to date function. This is the official definition of dates year to date. I'm going to ignore that and if, uh, make one definition of my own. And I'll say dates year to date takes the maximum date in the current context and backs up to the beginning of the year, returning this range of dates. Let's see that in an example. So imagine if the incoming filter context was this. And remember, uh, as you've seen in previous video, incoming filter context, to keep yourself honest, say it in terms of table column equals value. So calendar year equals 2016, calendar month equals July. So the max date becomes July 31, 2016, and the beginning of the year is Jan 1, 2016. That's by default. Keep in mind that you can change that by the second optional parameter in dates year to date. So if you want, you know, kind of the year end to be maybe January 31st, so that the beginning of the year is February 1st, you could do that using this parameter. But let's just run with January for now, and thus it returns us January 1 through July 31. That's going to be the result of dates year to date in this example. But remember, in our example, there was no filter context. Hence, it just picks up the max date to be the biggest one available in our calendar table, which is December 31, 2017 for our data model. It backs it up to the beginning of the year and hence it returns January 1, 2017 to December 31, 2017. That's it. We're done with the, the second step, C for calculate. Let's move on to the third step, A for apply relationships. So right now, only the calendar table is filtered and it has the filter shown right here, January 1, 2017 to December 31, 2017. In this step, apply relationships, the filters are transmitted through the relationships. You can think of relationships as filter transmission wires. And now it gets applied on the sales table. As it happens, for our sales table, there's no data for these dates. Hence, we end up with a table with zero rows or an empty table. So that's the result of this step. And now we're on to the last step in the I can four step approach. N is for do the numbers. So here we have our resultant table. And now we go back and do the numbers, which is the math, which is sales, which is simply the sum of sales amount. But since it's operating on an empty table, the re result is blank, and that is what's returned. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, sometimes we think of uh, the DAX measures more from a very human perspective. It helps to instead 
break it down into the step-by-step -step approach and that's going to help you understand what's going on with your DAX measures and filter context. Now this is a relatively simple example but you can use this four-step approach to break down and debug any measure and we will take on a few more challenging examples in other videos. Power on my friends. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.